plant growers, it's Lynn. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a very long awaited houseplant update, including all the, all the cacti and succulents and houseplants that we grow indoors. And uh, first of all, this is going to be part one. And in part one, I'm going to show you all the uh, houseplants and the succulents that we grow in our kitchen and our living room. And stay tuned for part two coming up in the next couple of days. I'm going to be showing you all the um, houseplants and cacti and succulents and the tillandsia air plants that we grow upstairs in, upstairs in our house. And um, I just want to mention as well, next week over the Easter holidays, do stay tuned for a cactus and succulent polytunnel update. I'm going to be filming an update in there for the spring over the Easter holidays. So um, stay tuned for that. And uh, here we go then guys. I hope you enjoy the, uh, the tour. Now here we are in the living room and we'll start off first of all with uh, our chlor chlorophytums, commonly known as the spider plants. And I have one that has the white stripe, the most common one going all the way through the middle. And also one of the ones that's mostly all green and one with a green stripe as well. All got little babies on them, doing really, really well there. And then here we have one of our monsteras, commonly called the, uh, the monkey's face one, because it's one of the miniature, the more miniature, smaller leaf variety. And uh, that's doing very well there. And here, another one of our Monstera monkey faces, absolutely gorgeous here, growing along on the moss pole. And I'm going to show you first of all in the window, and I've got Hans who is absolutely amazing helping me at the moment. So I can film, he's actually holding one of these light boxes <laughs> that's going to help with the lighting because although this is very bright in the living room, because there's light coming in from the window, it always casts a shadow when I'm filming, so this helps to lighten up the area. So it's brilliant that he's able to do that so you get a proper view of the plants, guys. And then in the window here, we have all our, well, well quite a few of our Sansevierias. And um, I'm not going to mention all the individual types of names because it would take too long. But if there's any particular plant that you like the look of and you want to know what the name is, let me know what, where it appears in the video and I'll let you know the idea of the actual plant. There's one of our Sansevierias here. And uh, as you can see, we have a lot of crystals that we have in our window with all our plants. I love crystals and plants and other Sansevierias there, all doing really well. And we have this one that is coming into blue. To show you there, lovely Sansevieria. And this window gets a bit of morning sun in the morning, so it's perfect location for Sansevierias because they can take shade and they can take sun, but ideally a, a position with a bit of light sun in the morning or sort of very late afternoon is ideal for them. They can certainly take a lot more shade than other type of succulents. And that's our lovely, um, big one there and another one there and this lovely pot is one that uh, Hans has had in his family for a very long time very beautiful with the bird on and there on a selection and then we have our moss balls difficult to reach in the window guys so <laughs> I'll just get here this is our moss balls that we have in the water aren't they incredible all I have to do with them is change the water every couple of weeks they are amazing guys and uh, another Sansevieria there so that's the ones we have in our window and then I'm going to show you here as I mentioned the lovely Monstera and uh, here we have our Dracaenas and uh, these are gorgeous plants as well low light plants so they're perfect just a little bit away from the window uh, gorgeous variety there this one here is another lovely Dracaena with a lovely sort of variegation in the lime green going through. Gorgeous variety. And then here we have another one of our Chlorophytums, the all green variety, mixed with a couple of others as well, as you can see. And loads of babies, loads of plantlets. And uh, here we have another one of our Dracaenas, quite a few different varieties. This one is a lovely one as well that has sort of that the white stripe going through. Absolutely gorgeous here. Lovely variegated Dracaena. And these plants, these house plants are absolutely brilliant for purifying the air. And a lovely sort of lime green and dark green variegation in that one. And then here 
bought Dracaenas, as <laughs> we have all our Dracaena collection here. This is a lovely variegated one as well. It has the lovely sort of pink edging on the leaves as well as the green going through the middle and uh, the cream, beautiful. All these we've had for quite a few years. This is the uh, another Dracaena as well, sort of all green with the lovely red edging on. Beautiful, beautiful variety there. And then here we have our um, Shuffleras. And we have three, three here, all, um, all a bit of variegation on them as well. We've got them growing there through, going out into the window. These I've had for absolutely years, about 20 years, this big old one here. And this one is a little one that we've propagated from uh, the mother plant. Just want to show you, that's all the new growth here as well with the um, Shuffleras. Absolutely loving it here with the wind, aren't they? Just gorgeous, all that new growth. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's our living room plants. As you can see, we have a lovely um, display in the window there. And I'm going to show you what we've got in the kitchen. Now here we are in our kitchen and we have more Sansevierias, all different varieties. This is the lovely moonshine that has the gorgeous shine to it. Lovely big whale fin, that's the, the giant form of the Sansevieria whale fin there. And um, this lovely Sansevieria. Again, as I mentioned, if you want to know the actual names of the type of Sansevierias and house plants and succulents, then do let me know where to peas in the video and I'll, and I'll let you know the proper name. It's just that it'd be way too time consuming to mention every single name. Then here we have our Pulcherima euphorbias, commonly known as the Poinsettias. And yes, the reason why they look like sticks is that um, we prune them back in the spring because they have gorgeous red foliage um, during the uh, winter time and then Hans is fantastic, he gives them all a good pruning now, which he's done. And then they come back all in fresh growth. And this is our pink flowering one. And look at all the new growth on that already. It's absolutely gorgeous coming through. And we've got these under the grow light here in the kitchen because there's no window at this spot. And they do very, very well there. And they're gonna be coming out into the polytunnel when the weather does warm up, hopefully soon. And then here we have more Sansevierias. This one is the... Um, the very gorgeous one. Yeah, there's a proper name. It was like the sword anyway. The Sansevieria sword. And this is like a huge fan. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then this one is another Sansevieria. This is one that Hans brought over from Sweden that he has grown for many, many, many years. Look at the size of it, guys. It's up to the roof. Beautiful. And happy to say this one is also coming into flower as well. As you can see there, the buds and the, the sticky honeydew is, is pouring off the buds. Absolutely gorgeous, that's gonna be beautifully blooming. And those of you who know Sansevieria flowers, they're gorgeous white flowers, often heavily scented as well. This one is a little Tradescantia in here as well. And then we have, um, yeah, we have a, <laughs> difficult to reach all these plants, guys. Euphorbia milli, a white flowery one here, that is in flower close to the window, that's a beauty. And also some more Sansevierias in the window as well. As you can see, Hans is doing a great job. Hans has took over the camera now because he's got longer arms than I have so he can reach. So hopefully you guys can see the sun's coming in at the moment. So hopefully you get an idea. And then here we have um, one of our Tradis, this is a Tradiscantia Nanook. And I'm very happy because a few months ago I did a video about this Tradescantia and it had loads of dry leaves, it, kept, it looked terrible. I found out it had thrips. I treated it with multiple applications of Nemo and it's completely recovered. Look at that guys, beautiful coloration on it. Very, very healthy. So happy to see this doing so well now. And then here we have some Prescias. These, believe it or not guys, are cactus because they have areoles and spines coming from them, but they're one of the very few leafy cacti related, similar to Preschiopsis. And um, these are quite amazing with their lovely leaves. This one here's a gorgeous Cordisiform begonia. It's absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, lovely little variety there, miniature leaves. And this was seed grown by my wonderful friend Galena in um, Kildare here in Ireland. Absolutely beautiful. 
And then here we have another little variegated Tradiscantia. And uh, here we have a lovely lemon tree. And uh, this is one that Hans has grown himself from seed about two years ago. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So this is obviously going to be coming out uh, when the weather warms up again. We overwinter this one indoors because it's still quite young. And obviously it's a tropical plant. It wouldn't survive our winters here in Ireland. In the window here, we have um, some Stapelias. This is Stapelia, I think Stapelia grandiflorus, yep. And this is one of Hans's that he bought over from Sweden as well. So that does well then in a sunny, this is a south facing window. So all these plants can take uh, plenty of sun. Another big Euphorbia Milli variety. It's a Euphorbia Milli variety, but not, it, obviously it's a much larger growing variety than the U, other Euphorbia Milli's red flowery one. So um, Clyde Morris, you're a Euphorbia expert. If you're able to give us the correct ID of this actual Euphorbia Milli type, do let us know because we haven't got an ID for it. It's one we bought about five years ago from, from Germany when we was in Berlin from um, Helmut Matt Cactus Nursery and it has grown amazing for us. Some more Euphorbia Milli's here, different varieties again. This one is one that has miniature, very miniature, little tiny red flowers, as you can see, very mini. And then this one next to it is um, one that we got a few years ago from our wonderful friend Olga in Greece, from Olga's Greenland here on YouTube. More the traditional type of milli with the lovely little red flowers. Always blooming, always beautiful. And then, um, yep, yeah, oh gosh, how could I miss this, guys? This here is a um, this is a, a Belician I think it's called and it is blooming beautiful for us look at that gorgeous flower guys it hangs down like a little bell isn't it beautiful gorgeous the lovely sort of corally orange and the yellow together very beautiful and uh, here in the window we have here um, this one, believe it or not, is a Slumbergera, and it's Slumbergera lutea. It's a miniature growing Slumbergera. It's the, it's the only one I keep in the kitchen window because it's a very sensitive one, very miniature growing, and it has little tiny little yellow flowers. Not flowered for me yet, but um, hopefully in the future. Lovely variety. Now here I have some Euphorbia seedlings. These ones are about two years old now. And these ones here, guys, I'm not kidding you, they are growing so fast. There's about nine in here. And these are seeds, these are Euphorbia obesa crossed with Symmetrica seeds, uh, seedlings. That I got the seeds from our wonderful friend Daz, Daz and Edith here on YouTube, Cacti Mania. And they are growing really well. I've just had to turn them around this morning because they were growing towards the window and um, they're going to straighten up but you can just see them taking shape there probably only about six weeks to two months at the most old and they're doing really well these are our other euphorbia obesas in the window there i sort of love these plants these i've had for absolutely ages guys um i think i was about 23 when i got these three euphorbia obesia so a very very long time ago now this is a Euphorbia meliformis, an Abesia type, but it has more sort of like... Um, thorns. Thorns, yeah. Sort of, how would you describe it really? Like papery almost, like cardboardy. Quite different to uh, the, the usual Euphorbia Abesia types that don't have any of the, the thorns on them. This is oh. Euphorbia uh, globosa, cross me though, Abesia. Lovely um, multi-clumping variety there. This one here is the dead sticks plant, uh, Euphorbia platyclada. It's, it looks like it's dead, but it's not, guys. That's actually how this plant is supposed to look. And it's blooming. <laughs> and it is blooming. The blooms are absolutely tiny on it. It's probably got the most smallest bloom that you're ever going to see on a Euphorbia or any plant come to that. Absolutely gorgeous. And then here, a mixture of all our different Euphorbias, many different types there, all different varieties. And... Uh, all our miniature ones. This one is a little Ripsalis variety, but all the rest are Euphorbias. And this one is a little Ripsalidopsis rosea cutting and uh, Pinio, uh, Pinio serious seedling there. And this one, I have to take the label off to check the name of this. This one is a um, 
Sire Natrum <laughs> and this is one we got from our wonderful, wonderful friend Kath at Purple and Thorns doing very well there in the window gorgeous uh, unusual usual succulent there now here we have another Monstera monkey face and this one is absolutely gorgeous we've got it grown all along the sink as you can see it's a lovely trailing plant and it goes all the way up all the way here on top of the plant stand absolutely gorgeous and um, then here we have got two amazing um, Trichocereus plants that we got back in, I think it was in October, in, um, from Trichocereus UK. And this one is Trichocereus pachanoi, absolutely gorgeous, big, fat, chunky variety. And this one here is Trichocereus peruvianus lovely awesome amazing spines look at that and those of you who know my channel know that we have um, the majority of all our, our trichoceros cacti out in the polytunnel and uh, they're doing well at the moment which I'm going to show you when I do the polytunnel collection cacti collection over the Easter holidays next week and then this one here is um, commonly called the cuddly cactus and um, this one is a um, serious Jamakaru and it's called nicknamed the cuddly cactus because it doesn't have any spies just the lovely felted areoles there and it's a gorgeous uh, variety that's also going to be coming out into the polytunnel in the uh, well, well it's spring now when the weather warms up here I've got a ferro cactus that I've recently repotted this one was one that was in the polytunnel but I've recently repotted it so I've got that there this one is a uh, ferro cactus viridescens gorgeous spines on that one and uh, then here we have got a, um, oh, Hans knows the name of yeah. this palm. Washingtonia. Washingtonia palm that uh, Hans has grown from seed. Absolutely gorgeous Two years there. ago. Nice. Two years ago. And this is a, one of our Clerodendrons, Clendron house plants. And it is all in bud at the moment. Look at that. And uh, the blooms are gorgeous, little red blooms when they open as well, red white and white, yeah. red and white. So like the Danish it. flag. <laughs> yeah, like the Danish flag. That's going to be blooming lovely very soon. And then here, this is my Epiphyllum German Empress, guys. And those of you who watched the video a few weeks ago when I did um, how, how bad it was looking, and I did a repot and a, a rescue on it, and it is looking absolutely amazing now. It's greened up, and look at all the new growth coming on it loads of new um new shootings all coming up on it and it is doing brilliant so this is making an amazing recovery so happy about that guys here we have some peperomias here um, this is peperomia brachyphyla and this is another peperomia variety um check the name of that one peperomia lemon and lime and as i say if you want to know all the proper names do let me know in the comments down below and i'll give you the proper names this is too too long to me to go and mention all the names plus i'm hopeless at pronouncing half of them and uh, here we have a um, another chlorophytum spider plant and this one is called curly locks because it has the lovely sort of curly leaves gorgeous variety there with a lot of our chlorophytum spider plants in our collection and this gorgeous plant here this lovely variegated one this one that's called an aglo aglonema and that's aglonema commutaxtum gorgeous variegation lovely house plant to grow as well very easy and the going there. and yeah. it has buds as well so that's yeah. coming into bloom very exciting now this one here this is one that we've recently got from our wonderful friends chris and aaron they very kindly gave us uh, this plant from their collection ficus pumila ficus pumila it absolutely gorgeous plant and it's thriving in our kitchen here it loves that uh, part sun part shade position there so um and then i'm going to show you here we've got our little kitchen table we've got yes guess what guys another chlorophytum spider plant and this is the all green variety and this is actually one i've grown from seed from um, the seeds from my other chlorophytums and when you grow them from seed they always grow all green by the way um, they don't grow with a variegation because the, only the plant that's will grow like that from a variegated plant this one is another peperomia here and this one is peperomia peperoma pereskifolia gorgeous variety there lovely succulent and this one is my ludicia discolor orchid 
and I have some more orchids as well in my grow room which I'll show you in the part two video in the next couple of days um, this one is Ludicia discolor has gorgeous leaf coloring as you can see like a lovely burgundy color with lovely white um, stripes going through beautiful orchid very easy going it's an orchid that does like to have a more indirect light position right does well there then here is our um, Zamiacolia, the Zamifolia, and commonly known as the ZZ plant. And uh, we have two of these. These are plants that Hans brought over from when he lived in Sweden. He's had them many years. Do very well for us here in our kitchen. Again, this, this succulent is one that does like a bit of shade and indirect light, which is why it does so well here. Do loads of uh, new leaf coming up on there. Lovely growth. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Here we have a, another Tradescantia, and uh, this one, I don't actually have the name of this Tradescantia, but it's a lovely sort of large leafed growing one, and um, nice sort of dark, dark green and lighter green variegation in it. It's packed with flowers, and the flowers actually open up over night time, so you've missed the flowers, guys, and um, obviously over night it's not practical to film, but this has lovely little starry white blooms on it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Again, loves a a shady position or position with um, bright so a position with indirect light this one here is another begonia that we have and this is begonia alba picta absolutely gorgeous plant has a uh, little spotty green and little tiny spots all along the leaves and a uh, very easy going plant as well uh, lovely 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 coal blooms that hang down beautiful plant and it's um, male male uh, flowers here is the male flowers and there is the female flowers wow. so and they are easy to propagate as well and uh, we have seeds here from them here you see the seeds it's like dust here is about 10,000 seeds at least wow <laughs> that's yeah. a lot of begonia plants guys <laughs> we love dates you know and this is a date palm uh, phoenix dactylifera grown and this, from dates yeah, and it's uh, about two years now it's a lovely one beautiful that's going to be coming out into the garden in the yard yes speak when, well it's spring now but when it warms up I should say guys now here on our back wall these are all plants that prefer to have more again bright but indirect light and uh, I'll start on the top first of all. We've got on the top shelf, we've got a selection of different types of ferns. And uh, they grow really well up here because I say it's a shady position but bright. And they, they seem to love that position there. They have these lovely stems above the surface. Oh yeah, they're lovely furry hairy, um, yeah, hairy rhizomes. Stems, they're yeah. lovely, aren't they? With the lovely ri really uh, hairy lovely. rhizomes. And the little Tradescantia variety we have here. And, uh, Traditional here. Nephrolepis. Yeah, Nephrolepis fern. Yeah. Commonly known as the Boston. <coughs> the Boston fern. Yeah, yeah. And here we have another Tradescantia variety. And this is one that Hans brought over as well from Sweden. And this is the Tradescantia spathacea. And it's a large growing uh, Tradescantia, huge. You can see the size of my hand compared to it. Beautiful, beautiful variety. And um, the underneath purple, of the leaves yeah. are purple. <laughs> Look at that, it's just gorgeous. And it makes an incredible house plant. And here we have a more co very common Tradescantia, commonly known as the, the Wandering Dew. This is Tradescantia zebrina and has a lovely sort of deep purple stripe going through the middle of lovely coloration and it is blooming for us look at that little bloom guys isn't it just gorgeous and then here we have a clivia and uh, this is a plant that we got uh, quite a few years ago from our friend olga in greece from olga's greenland here on youtube doing very well for us and then here um, we have uh, this is a, a philodendron and this is one that Hans also brought over from Sweden and it's growing incredible as you can see it's a lovely trailing plant and it loves shade this is a plant that doesn't do too well in bright sun we had it when when 
during the middle of the winter the sun comes right through into this room and I think that's why it was getting a lot of the dry tips as you can see it's starting to green up really well now because it prefers a shady spot so these are on the floor and um, here a Stephanotis Floribunda and this one is one that comes out for the spring and summer when it warms up into the yard because it loves a lot of sun now here we've got some Prescias and this is Prescia Goddess Sefiana and this is actually a cactus as you know we had some smaller ones I showed you earlier by the sink and this is a plant that comes out for the spring and summer months out into our yard because it loves a lot of sunshine and we've purely only got it here in the kitchen just because we overwinter in it and it's not quite warm enough yet to put out for the spring and summer but it's going to be coming out very soon once the chance of all the frost has completely gone away and different varieties as well here of Pereschias. And then this one here is an absolutely gorgeous fern, one of my favorites. This is called a, um, a Devalia fern. And again, it has one of these, these, well, lots of these amazing, gorgeous rhizomes and they're hairy. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is actually the, the, the plant in there and it's just overtook the whole of this plant here where we have another Stephanotis floribunda growing in. It's absolutely awesome. This again also comes out into the yard for the summer in a shady position because it can take plenty of rain and it does very well out in the garden in the, the spring and summer months. Here's another Prescia here, again Godsefiana one. They look a little bit limp at the moment but they pick up when we take them out into the yard when the weather warms up for spring and summer. They really come into growth and really, really start growing well. Again, another uh, Prescia here. This is Prescia dias romaniana. has beautiful pink flowers in the summertime. So hopefully that will flower again when we take it out this year. And then here is another Philodendron. As again, another lovely growing uh, variety. This is the same one as the other one we showed you. Again, go, does really well here. And here on the stand we have Bucania. Uh, Bucania um, recavatus and uh, two of these this is one that Hans has had a very long time that he took over from Sweden lovely big uh, cordex on these and these are, are sunny sun lovers so these are only overwintering here at the moment until it's warm enough to put them back into the yard for the, the spring and summer months but they overwinter well here they get plenty of light and then here on the plant stand we have got um, Tradescantias, <laughs> we've got a mixture of everything on this plant stand and this plant stand is one that we recently got given to us from our wonderful friend Sean at uh, Rambles with my camera here on YouTube and uh, we have a lovely sort of purple growing Tradescantia here hanging all the way down again these plants sort of love a bright but in can take indirect light as well so they're, they're, these are going to be staying here all the time and this is a lovely variegated um, long growing Tradescantia as well they make lovely hanging plants and here this is another lovely um, variegated pink and green variety of uh, Tradescantia lovely there look and this is a little miniature leaved green growing little miniature leaved Tradescantia don't know the exact name of these type of Tradescantias, so that's why I'm saying that's a green type and this is a variegated type. <laughs> and here we've got some Phalaenopsis orchids, some more orchids, different types of, uh, it's got white, pink and all different coloured flowering Phalaenopsis there. And they do well there because they're in a bright, again, but indirect position, which fowls love. And then I spray the aerial roots with um, water regularly to keep them all, all the humidity. And then this begonia is, oh, this is gorgeous. This is a begonia maculata. And just look at this. This is growing incredible. Lovely big spots on it. It's a, it's a very popular house plant. And uh, it does very well for us. Again, it can take sort of shade. It can take uh, indirect like bright light. It's an easy going house plant. Always having to prune it back. Roots really well by taking cuttings and sticking in water as well. It's a gorgeous gorgeous hanging plant as you can see there and uh, then at the bottom we have some more fowls some more phalaenopsis orchids there as well and uh, some tradescantias different type this is an all green growing tradescantia there and I think guys that's pretty much it we've just got a couple of air plants I forgot to mention in the window mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so this um this one is um i can't think of the top of my name now but it has lovely purple flowers on it this air plant it's a more of an arid growing air plant so it loves more drier air than the other ones and this one is um, another air plant tillandsia cacticola as well and that's why i've got these two in this sunny south facing window i used to have a lot more um, air plants in this window but i've moved them all upstairs into the bathroom window so i'm going to include that in the part two video of the house plants collection so do, do stay tuned for all of our tillandsia air plants we have a lot of them and uh, pretty much think that is it then guys so wow happy to say i hope you enjoyed the part one and as i mentioned do stay tuned for part two which i'm going to show you the grow room of cacti succulents in there and the tillandsia air plants and also all of the house plants around the house that we've got upstairs and coming soon over the easter holidays a cactus and succulent plant update spring update so thank you so much for watching the big Thumbs up to Hansi for filming as well behind the camera. So do go over and subscribe to him as well. Um, Plant Daddy, links will be up above. And don't forget to subscribe to me too. And one massive favour to ask you guys before you leave, do leave a comment in the, in the comments down below, even if it's just a heart or smiley, because every comment really helps the algorithm. If you haven't done already, don't forget to subscribe, as I mentioned. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Desert Plant of Avalon. And for more growing tips on how to care for cacti and succulents, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to wish you all an amazing plant-powered spring!